Hi guys, how's it going? Two days to Christmas and today we're going to be talking specifically about the best graphic settings that I have found anyway for the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 with the HP Reverb G2. So let's go. By the way, a big welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and also VR educational entertainment. If you're new to the channel, very nice to meet you. And of course, a huge welcome back to all our regular subscribers because it's always awesome to have you with us. In the previous videos, we spoke about how to be able to find the game from $1 using the Xbox Pass, going through the entire installation process, as well as of course, installing the VR update so you can get up and running with the setup guide and also my first impressions. Today we're going to focus purely on how to optimize those settings to get the best VR experience possible and we'll be using the RTX 2070 with an Asus motherboard, the Hero 11, also the i7-9700K chip. Now if you want to see a live test, I do have another YouTube channel called VR Sandbox where I do all the live unedited tests. So do head out to that channel, link in the description below the like button. But without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing you need to do is go to the top where it says options and then on the next screen click on general. Now you'll notice on the middle of the page it says PC at the very top. Now all you have to do is click on the arrow until you see VR mode. Now make sure you are in VR mode because of course if you're in PC mode it's not going to affect any changes whatsoever once you hop on to VR. So normally my default settings and your default settings at this moment in time should be the same. So as I'm scrolling through the page here, do double check but normally it should be absolutely the same. So let's just launch the game in the flight instruction mode of step one how to you know basically fly the plane and then let's compare the graphics a little bit. Let's analyze as to what's going on there and then see what we could potentially improve together. So in order to go into VR mode, by the way, if you have the HP Reverb D2, all you have to do is hit the control and tab and then automatically you'll go inside of VR mode. By the way, if you have any issues with the Oculus, do go to the previous video. There are a lot of people who have provided some solutions there, which I have added inside of the pinned comments. Once we're inside, you can see that for me, the experience as it is as default is actually pretty good. I have to say that everything is more or less clear and you can see pretty much quite far away. However, there are some discrepancies here and there, which I think we could work on, including, first of all, you will see these jagged edges here in front and also on the control panel, you will see them here where basically everything is a little bit jagged there. And if you try to look far away, you'll see that sometimes the uh, landscape starts to actually become a little bit blurry. And also when we're looking down, you'll notice that a lot of the detail isn't very sharp. There's a lot of blurriness there as well. The actual wheel also, you can tell that the detail is missing quite a bit. It doesn't look super sharp. So there are definitely some areas where we could work on. And I'm going to give you some tips as to the actual things to crank up and then those that you don't need to crank up so much because basically the settings I'm going to give you are pretty much going to work with, I would say, any headset or all headsets. Um, and also, okay, I'm using the RTX 2070. However, I believe that a lot of the settings I'll be using today will also be compatible with lower end uh, uh, GPUs. So do let me know in the comments below whether my settings have worked for you because you could be very surprised as to the settings we're going to be using today. They're not actually going to be super high yet we're going to be able to get really good results. So let's go back to the computer and let me show you the difference in settings that I actually made to get the results that I wanted. Now to go back to the previous screen, all you have to do, make sure that you are on the Microsoft Flight 2020 screen on your PC and not on the Windows Mixed Reality screen. Otherwise you won't be able to navigate with your mouse. And by the way, if you want to alternate from one screen to the other, all you have to do is press and hold the Alt and Enter keys together. And this will exit basically full screen mode, which will enable you to go from your desktop PC and navigate there, as well as navigating on the actual Microsoft Flight 2020 App because if you don't do that, you're going to be stuck. You won't be able to go back and navigate on your taskbar and all these kind of things. So just a tip there. So make sure you exit also VR mode so you can go back to the next screen. Then all you have to do is go back to general and then graphics and make sure that at the top you pick VR 
So do click on the arrow, make sure you're not on PC mode for the graphics. So once we're back inside of the PC, uh, the VR settings, let's just go one by one first, just to explain to you a little bit the changes that we're gonna be making and why we're gonna be making them. Now the render scaling is basically where it's going to render all the different pixels to scale, and it's really gonna be able to give you optimum performance. Now do note that that's not where you should really be starting to boost things up because the higher it is, believe me, you're gonna to start to get stutter. And with my RTX 2070 and the Asus Maximus Hero 11 and i7-9700K, well, basically, even when I put it to 90, especially 100, I get a lot of stutter inside of the cockpit. So for me, this setting is really completely useless even when I actually put everything else to complete low. So I'm just gonna leave it to 80. Now for the anti-aliasing, I would leave it to TAA because it is the best setting possible. And of course, if you can leave it to TAA, then just do that. If really you have to scale back, then of course you have no choice, but do try to start off with TAA first because it really is the best setting. Now the terrain level of detail is quite fun because it doesn't actually provide that much more detail in the terrain itself. It does help a little bit, but it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. In fact, if you were to try to put it at the minimum, which is 10, you'll see that, okay, you will of course lose some detail and things will get to show to show a little bit blurry, but at the end of the day, 100 is more than enough. You could put it, if you want to, 150, but honestly, you're not gonna see that much difference. So I did try to put it to 200. I didn't really get any performance issues that much, but it also equally didn't really change that much. So I'm just gonna leave it to 100. In fact, I could put it to 80. I'd be absolutely fine with that. Now for the next four underneath, which include the terrain level of detail, terrain vector data, buildings, trees, grass, and bushes. Now, I would actually put these to high, except for the grass and bushes. Now, it does make a difference when you turn that on, believe me, you'll be able to see much more contrast in the trees, and also the colors will pop, and the textures, you'll be able to see the differences in the different kind of plants um, that, that are there in the landscape. So, I would just put it maybe to low or medium if you possibly can, but low should be completely fine. Now for the object level of detail, to be honest with you, again, if you crank it up, it's not really gonna make that much difference. So I actually set mine to 50 because when I tested it at 10, I didn't really see that much difference. I mean, okay, fine. Some things were a little bit more blurry inside of the cockpit. And maybe some of the buildings weren't as detailed as they could be, but 50 really did the job. So I'm not gonna put it any higher than that. I'm completely fine with it. Now the volumetric clouds is something that I actually would play with last because believe me if you set that up it's really going to affect the performance of the game overall now the volumetric clouds you're going to basically depending on the setting you're going to be using you're going to see more or less detail inside of the clouds so when it's set on low they look a little bit cartoonish they lose that kind of feeling of you know hyper realism however if you put it on medium or high you will start to notice very fast especially if your graphics card isn't really, you know, can't really handle certain things or you don't have the chipset as well with all the threads that you need. Because remember, you have mixed reality windows running at the same time and possibly you have other services running in the background as well. So of course, do make sure you switch off all those things. So my recommendation is just leave it on low first, go through the rest and then later at the very end, see whether you can bump it up. And if you can't, then just leave it as it is because you will get stutter. For me, with the RTX 2070, I got stutter, so therefore, I'm just gonna leave it to low. Now, for texture resolution, it is really important to have as much detail as you possibly can. So, if your machine can handle it, just leave it on high. I wouldn't really put it to ultra. I wouldn't put anything to ultra, to be very honest, because honestly, ultra and high, there is a tiny, slight change in percentage. It's not high enough to really make it dramatically different. So I generally just tend to put things on high. So for this, I will leave it on high. Now, anisotropic filtering is basically useful to be able to super enhance any object that is going to be viewed at a specific angle. For example, when you're looking at a cliff and you see the textures on those cliff, how they're rendered as they go from the top 
to the bottom, you'll see there's a lot of curvature there. So are they going to be warped or are they going to look very clear? So that's basically where you can start to make those changes so you can make objects on textures look more clear. Now I found that when I bumped up that setting to the maximum, it didn't actually make that much of a difference. So for the purpose of my graphic settings, I'm just going to leave it to fall. Now for the texture sampling, this is where you can boost some of those pixels to make everything look a bit sharper. So do play around there. But I found that for me, the most comfortable setting was actually two or maximum four. Anything more than that, then I started to have some stutter here and there. So two or four is absolutely fine for me. Now for texture synthesis, I did play around a lot with this as well. But honestly speaking, I didn't really see any much difference whatsoever, even when it was cranked up to the entire maximum. So to be honest with you, you could leave this off or just put it on low because it's not really going to make that much of a bigger deal. If it does, and if I'm wrong for you, of course, do leave a comment below and let us, you know, the community know about your settings and how it made the change for you. Now for water waves, it's a little bit similar to texture synthesis in the sense that texture synthesis, of course, it's meant to super sample or enhance the graphics of synthetic textures. But for water waves, especially in, you know, the world that I'm playing in, there isn't that much water. So I don't really need, you know, to be able to crank up those settings and make the computer work harder than it's really supposed to. Perhaps in other maps, then you may want to play around with this. But for the purpose, you know, for me anyway, I'm just going to leave it to low. Now, both for the shadow maps and the terrain shadows, I did a lot of playing around here as well. I cranked up the settings to the maximum. But actually, to be very honest with you, it doesn't really make that much of a difference to have the shadow maps cranked up to the maximum. So if you look at the shadows when they're at complete minimum, they look actually pretty decent. There is no much, I mean, there isn't much artifacting, there isn't much pixelation there, and there isn't much, you know, it doesn't look blocky or blotchy in any way. It looks completely reasonable. So to be honest with you, I would just leave those to the optimum low settings. I think you'll be absolutely fine with that. And for contact shadows, same thing. When I put it on and I put it to the maximum and all these kind of things, it didn't really make any difference whatsoever. So actually for the purpose of my settings, I'm just going to leave it off. Now for the windshield effect, of course, it can give, you know, some more realism, especially when you have nice reflections, refractions and all these kind of things and light coming on and all this kind of stuff. But honestly speaking, it didn't really make any much difference to the gameplay. So again, I don't want to have the computer working harder than it's supposed to so that I can focus in other areas of the graphic setting. So for me, I'm just going to leave it low. Now, ambient inclusion is supposed to basically tie up everything together, you know, make those shadows much smoother, make the illumination a bit more hyper realistic and just, you know, all in all, to sprinkle that magic dust there. But honestly speaking, after I had put it on, it didn't really make any difference either. So again, I don't want the machine to work for no reason. So I just leave it off. Reflections is also something that's quite nice to have because it can add more immersion and more hyper realism to your experience. However, in this case, I found that when they were off, there was enough reflections in what was going on to have a really nice immersive experience. So for the purpose of my personal graphic settings, I'm just going to leave it as default. So for the light shaft, which is basically illumination that comes from the sun as like kind of rays, which are specifically noticeable when you're flying on the clouds. Now, personally speaking, of course, you could add this to it. You can leave it on and put it to low or maybe medium. But honestly speaking, for me, it didn't really make that much different either. So I just left it to the default setting. Now, Bloom is quite interesting because it does add a little bit more dimension to your VR experience. You will basically see some glare or flares coming from the sun, depending on where you're turning or rotating with your plane. But to be honest, if you're going to have some kind of headache kind of sensation, then do check if your Bloom is on or off because it can make some people uncomfortable as you will see some bright light coming, you know, in front of you in your in your eyes. So if I were you, just switch it off for the moment and then later you could put it on. Honestly, it doesn't really make that much of a difference to the computing powers, whether it's on or off. But anyway, for me, I'm going to leave it on. Now for the glass cockpit experience, what this basically means is the higher it is, the more the frame rates are all going to be smoothed out. So you have a really nice cinematic kind of I guess, experience. So the higher it is, yes, it will look smoother, but you might also, of course, get stutter depending on the GPU that you have. And if it's on low, then you might not have such a smooth experience, but you might be able to move around much more easily without having, you know, lagging and all these kind of things. So for me, I'm just going to leave it on medium. So once you're done, all you have to do is either click on, you know, apply and save or just hit the F11 key as what it says there and then click on go back 
then restart. So that basically it restarts everything from scratch and uses your new settings in your next session. So what we can see now is that basically everything that's below is a lot sharper. You can see the textures of all the different houses and also the mountains. It looks much better. And you can see much further away now. Things don't get so blurry so easily. And the clouds, they haven't really, they changed a bit, of course, but they still look, you know, pretty flat, I would say, because unfortunately we cannot, you know, boost those volumetric cloud settings at the moment. But for the rest, the rest is pretty good. And it definitely has improved things. You can tell that the tire, if we look at the tire, the tire looks much sharper. You see a lot, a lot more detail on it. And also inside of the cockpit, even though there are still a little bit of jagginess here and there, but it's already much, much better, as you can tell. So the graphics aren't, you know, don't have as many jagged edges. It's much sharper and much more realistic. And then you can see the little, nope, you can see the little reflections here on the side with the bloom, as I was telling you earlier. That's a really nice little piece of realism there. And then the shadows, if we look at those, I mean, they look a tiny, tiny bit blotchy, but honestly speaking, it doesn't really affect me whatsoever. I'm quite happy with them. They don't have to be super perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some side-by-side -side comparison graphics. So you can really tell, try to see what the differences are. I'm going to go close to the buildings and all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, just let you see what you feel works for you. But these are the settings that I found work best for, for my gameplay. Perhaps for you it will be different. But try starting off with those and then see how you go and perhaps, you know, bump up whatever you feel you need to bump up. But for me, I'm perfectly happy and now it's time to go flying. Guys, by the way, do make sure that you're part of the notification squad by enabling the notification bell after you subscribe because I'm going to be uploading tons more content after Christmas and the new year and you're not going to want to miss a single video.